Grunge is back. A new survey is packed with insights about the state of 3D, and there's kind of sorta a Rive competitor. It's Motion Mondays. YOLO. Chris Zachary, in his infinite benevolence, has gifted us AEReference.com, a curated wonderland for After Effects artists of all levels. Remember those ancient portal sites from the dawn of the internet? Well, they are so back. The site is a curated treasure trove of tutorials, free project files, and industry podcasts, and even a stash of ready-to-paste expressions. Feel like loop and a wiggle? Chris has got you. Want to maintain stroke width while scaling? Bam, it's all there. It's all boom and no doom. And please tell me in the comments if you got that reference. What sets the site apart is Chris's expert curation, helping you navigate the vast ocean of AE knowledge. For new artists especially, it's a lifesaver. You don't know what you don't know, right? So head to aereference.com and prepare to level up your motion design brain. There's something for artists of all levels, so go check it out, link in the description. Last week, we dropped our first ever short film directed by our own Rabinowitz and made using Unreal Engine and some nifty compositing in After Effects. As part of the launch, we hosted a contest where you could win an incredible prize pack worth nearly $5,000. And it's time to announce the two winners. First up is Marid Ryan, a Toronto-based motion designer. So congrats, Marid. And the second winner is French artist Nicolas Roccatori, who also goes by Nico Rocco, which I think is pretty cool. Both winners will receive one year of our new School of Motion All Access training platform, a one year subscription to Maxon One, the VDB bundle and the Unreal Experience bundle from Pixel Lab, a one year Artlist Max subscription, a license of Real Smart Motion Blur from Revision FX, and an Unreal environment of your choice from amazing environment artist Vasily Porzhin. Thanks so much to all the sponsors who were involved and to everyone who entered. And a big congrats to our own for putting together such an awesome short literally all by himself, with some voice acting help from some actual professional actors. Check out the film on our channel, the link will be in the description, and we'll definitely be doing more giveaways in the future. The Pixel Lab just dropped a fiery update to their ultimate procedural material library for Redshift. That is a mouthful. They've added 80 new pyro scenes that you can drop into your project and tweak to get the perfect smoke, fire, fog, or fart. Mm -hmm. And the best part, you can snag it for 30% off with code RS30. This pack is the perfect complement to Grayscale Gorilla Plus, focusing a little bit more on techie abstract textures that will make your clients think you're a genius. With nearly 2,000 textures and those sweet new pyro scenes, it's a pretty jam-packed set. As the industry trends towards faster, more efficient workflows, asset packs like this are becoming essential tools. So whether you're a seasoned pro or you're just dipping your toes into the VDB pool, this pack might be a no-brainer for you. Your renders and your deadlines will thank you. Polygon, the brainchild of Blender donut guru Andrew Price, just dropped their state of CG 2024 survey, and it's very interesting. Now, keep in mind this data is probably Blender biased because that's Andrew's audience, but there's still plenty for us motion design folk to chew on. Blender dominates among hobbyists and students, while Cinema 4D remains the pro's choice, especially in advertising. C4D scored high for usability and ease of learning, but it took a hit on cost. Shocking, I know. The survey also revealed some fascinating industry insights. C4D rules advertising, Houdini dominates VFX, and Maya reigns supreme in animation. Blender seems to be getting fairly even love across all industries. My takeaway is that C4D is still the king in our world, but Blender is nipping at its heels. And let's pour one out for Maya in 3DS Max. Their user satisfaction scores are lower than my follicle count. Again, this survey is likely biased towards Blender, but I found it fascinating, and I recommend all 3D artists check it out to get a lay of the land in the current 3D environment. Thanks to Andrew and his team for putting this together. The link will be in the description. Rive, the interactive animation tool that I mention pretty much every week, just made a big announcement. Unlimited personal files for free accounts. That's right, the floodgates are now open and the only limit is your schedule and maybe your caffeine intake. This move is sure to supercharge Rive's already rapid growth, removing barriers for curious animators everywhere. They've also revamped their pricing tiers and added workspace features for better organization. As an advisor to Rive, full disclosure, I'm constantly amazed by how they're pushing the boundaries of motion design. It seems like every week another huge company is adopting Rive and revolutionizing their approach to interactive animation. So now, with zero excuses left, it's time to dive in and see what all the fuss is about. Your future self will thank you, which in my case means I'm going to be getting a lot of pumpkin coffees. It's time for a quick tip that'll make your composition shine brighter than my scalp on a hot summer day. 
Maybe that joke went a little too far. Anyway, we're going old school with a custom glow that'll give you more control than just slapping on the built-in glow in After Effects. Start with a curves effect to boost those highlights and you can play with the shadows too. Then add separate Gaussian blurs for horizontal and vertical control. And yes, I said Gaussian correctly this time. Watch last week's video to find out why it's pronounced that way. Anyway, composite the results back on top of your original artwork with CC Composite. Remove the RGB only checkbox and I usually set it to add mode and voila, you've got a glow that you now have total control over. If you wanna get fancier, throw in some HLS auto noise for that popular sizzle look and you can add a hue and saturation effect to tweak the vibrancy and colors to taste. Any effects you add before the CC composite can affect the glow. So play around, this technique is super versatile. This method gives you the flexibility to tweak every aspect of your glow, from color to noise to blur direction. It's like having a glow Swiss army knife in your AE toolkit. So next time you need to add some sparkle to your scene, try ditching the presets and get your hands a little dirty. It's time to roll out the red carpet for our School of Motion student of the week, Bruno Santos from Critical Mass Agency. Bruno is part of the all access program that we recently launched for teams of three or more who need a more accessible way to go through our extensive curriculum. Bruno is blazing through Animation Bootcamp in record speed. It's honestly kind of wild. His eyes go here exercise is a great example of using the principle of eye trace, showing he's learned to choreograph on screen elements like a digital ballerina. Bruno's work demonstrates an understanding of how to guide the viewer's attention, making transitions feel smooth and considered. It's not just random movement, it's carefully orchestrated to control the viewer's eye, and it's a great strategy to use when animating. Bruno, we're honestly blown away by your progress and can't wait to see where your motion design journey takes you next, so keep up the amazing work. You are making us proud, man. Cyclops, the brainchild of School of Motion alumni Kyle Martinez, just got an upgrade that'll make your case studies much sexier. This niche tool lets you render out your After Effects comps with all the UI elements visible. Think layer handles, motion paths, and all those nerdy widgets that we secretly love. Why on earth would you do this? Well, because showing off your process is like revealing the secret sauce of your motion design. It's not just eye candy, it's proof that you've got a method to your process and it builds confidence with clients. Big studios like Ordinary Folk and The Furrow are already using it to add that extra sprinkle of professionalism to their portfolios. New features include full app window renders and green screen modes for easy compositing. And at 25% off until August 23rd, it's a steal at 15 bucks. So go ahead, pull back the curtain on your After Effects wizardry. Your clients and fellow motion nerds will thank you. Lottie Lab, another cloud-based 2D animation tool optimized for creating Lottie files, just leveled up with a feature that honestly is pretty mind blowing. Their new interactivity tool lets you define and blend between different animation states. Think hover, click, active, inactive, all inside their web-based animation tool. Now what's the big deal? Well, this kind of functionality used to be a pain in the tuchus with Lottie exports from After Effects. Smoothly blending between states required either third-party tools or a lot of custom code. And now it's much easier. The tool even optimizes your Lottie files and provides the code to implement all that interactive goodness. While I haven't taken it for a spin yet, it looks very promising. So if you try it, especially if you've used Drive also, drop a comment and let us know how they compare. It's clear that interactive animation is the new frontier in motion design and Lottie Lab is staking its claim. So huge kudos to the team for pushing Lottie's boundaries and I can't wait to see what they cook up next. Tendril, the Michelangelo of 3D motion design studios just flexed their 3D muscles with a project for Figure, an AI company building humanoid robots. You know, the plot from Terminator. The work is unsurprisingly amazing. Mostly known for their mind-bending particle simulations and super technical work, Tendril took a different approach here, letting the product speak for itself. The star of the show is the lighting, composition, and texturing that's somehow very simple and also insanely detailed. These robots look so real, you can almost see faint fingerprints on them. I mean, talk about attention to detail. It's a masterclass in the less is more philosophy, proving that sometimes the most impressive 3D projects are the ones that just nail the basics. Tendril's write-up on their site is a goldmine of process imagery and insights, so if you wanna drool over some 3D eye candy and maybe learn a thing or two about subtle perfection, check out the Figure 02 launch video. It's like 3D robot porn, but classy. Meta and the University of Oxford have been cooking. They've released an AI model that claims to generate high-quality 3D models from a single image. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, let's just say I decided to put it to the test with a toilet because nothing says cutting edge tech like a porcelain throne. The results, well, let's just say it's a little more abstract art than usable 3D model. Check out this turntable video it generated for me. I mean, could you use that toilet? 
Anyway, while the cherry-picked examples in this Venture Beat article look impressive, my experiment proved it's still very much in the hit or miss category. But it's open source, so you can play with it now on Hugging Face. Just set up a free account and look for the V-Fusion 3D model and you can try it out right now. Who knows, maybe you'll have better luck than I did with my toilet. The technology is promising, especially for background elements, but don't expect to replace your 3D modeling skills just yet. If you give it a whirl, let us know in the comments and bonus points if you can make a better toilet than the AI. James Isaacs is one talented man. If you're not following him, do so now. He recently posted some work he did on the 2024 Olympics graphics toolkit. This isn't your average sports package. It's as funky and stylish as Paris itself. But beyond the eye candy, James gave us a peek into the details of the project, generously sharing his workflow secrets. He talks about grid systems, pre-comp setups, and essential graphics panel controls that made tweaking athlete names and placement a breeze. The toolkit had to work in multiple formats and with athlete names that sometimes get very long, so it had to be built really smart to allow for that flexibility. The result is a gorgeous toolkit that's as well-built as it is well-designed. James's walkthrough is a masterclass in balancing creativity with practicality, proving that even in the high-stakes world of broadcast graphics, there's a ton of room for innovation. So give James a follow, check out the video, and let us know what you think in the comments. I am very excited about this. Brady Erickson, the Andrew Kramer of Photoshop, just dropped an early Christmas present in the form of an all-in-one vintage effects panel for Photoshop. This $39 plugin is like having a make grungy button for your designs, letting you add one-click effects in seconds. No more wrestling with Photoshop's horribly clunky displacement map. Seriously, Adobe, it's 2024. Can we fix that? With 14 built-in distress styles and tons of fine-tuning options, this panel is a no-brainer for anyone looking to add some vintage vibes to their work. Brady's walkthrough video is packed with pro tips like splitting up the stroke and the fill for more realistic effects. Combined with Texture Lab's existing resources, you can now achieve in minutes what used to take hours of meticulous work. And at 39 bucks, it's a steal for designers looking to ride the resurging grunge wave. And that is a wrap for this week's Motion Mondays. If you've enjoyed this roller coaster ride through the world of motion design, do us a solid and hit that subscribe button. It's like giving us a virtual high five and who doesn't love those? More subscribers means more awesome guests on our podcast more content to push the industry forward, and more reasons for my children to respect me. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.